Speaking of the Zaytown sorority, I can't remember if you had the Fuck Your Couch single before the sorority or that came after you um, started kind of simultaneously. simultaneously. Um, yeah, the Fuck Your Couch, the original Fuck Your Couch record was on the Zaytown sorority mixtape. Um, the original version featuring Cap One and Young LA. Um, I released a single about the same month as the Zaytown sorority mixtape first came out. Um, and then I went on later and did a remix with Shoddy Low and we released it again later in the year. Now speaking on that record, it, you know, when you had the Zaytown sorority mixtape come out and you had the single, you definitely had a buzz in Atlanta, you know, for people that might have never seen you before or heard of your name. Um, and then it kind of died down a little bit. What was the cause of that? Ooh. Well, let's see. I pushed the record, you know, and it, it did very well. I did the remix. I got Shawty Low on there. Uh, we shot the video, and everything's all prepared to go full force uh, as far as the viral promo marketing. And, you know, I'm an independent artist, so I'm doing all this myself with my own money, my own budget. I don't have an investor, and I don't have a label. So I had all my money set to the side, and I had ended up getting into some legal problems. It cost me a whole lot of money, so I had to put some things on hold as far as the promo and, you know, really working the record the way I wanted to. So just trying to get things back in order right now so I can go full force. What kind of legal issues? <laughs> ah, it's funny that you say that because um, recently I watched an interview that you did with another um, rap artist that's also here in Atlanta that's pretty hot and well known and him and I actually uh, had a situation that um, caused me to get into some legal trouble and um, that's where we are right now um, and it's just really funny that you just you brought that up because you just interviewed this guy the other day and I was cracking up because the stories that he tells about what happened are just really really funny and Fetch. Tell him the truth. Like I heard a story last What's night. What's the story? What's the story? Yeah. Yeah. Got I may arrested. occasionally take oh, I a drink. I heard you got arrested in Atlanta for theft or something. No, no. Yeah. You recently had a little <laughs> jail stint that I think yeah. a lot of people were confused about. It was messy stuff. Hey man, I got something to tell you. Uh, How long you had to go to jail the other day? Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, is it true you got that car? <laughs> That's definitely not what happened. Actually, none of the three stories or four stories that I've heard so far on his, you know, recorded interviews are anything close to what really happened. I was in the Hellcat. I test drive the Hellcat. Now, if you don't know what the Hellcat is, it's the new Dodge Challenge. It's the yes. fastest street legal car that they make. 200 mm -hmm. miles an hour. I was in Wisconsin. I think I had, I was, I was, um, I had a little bit too much to drink the night before. And so I come to the airport, I have, this water money on me, and they wanted to count it, and I was tripping on them and bugging out. I go to the trenches. My brother didn't want to go to the liquor store. Slash drug dogs. <laughs> the cops swarmed down on them people like a beehive, and, you know, and they took the car. It was so embarrassing. I told, I changed driving here, okay, and my son came on the radio, and I kept going. <laughs> you just kept moving? Yeah, yeah, okay. Two in my valve. I got a room. I'm gone. I was in the cave by the time I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I did not take the car. I left it in the cave. I don't know that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't. that. And yeah, I'm, I'm uh, guilty. <laughs> what happened? So it all stemmed from that water cash. Water cash ain't a thing. Acting a fool. Like, they was like, let us count the money. I'm like, why y'all why y'all on me like that? You know what I mean? They just all over me. They're like, just let us count it. So I pulled the bank out. He was arrested in the airport, uh, but he had an outstanding warrant. And when he, you know, traveled through the airport, the warrant came up. When he got off the plane, they were waiting for him. All that story about the wad of money and all that's just something. Yeah, I remember he talked about that. He said that he had a, a wad of money and uh, it was kind of like a distraction and the TSA got involved and then they kind of ran his name after that distraction. Yeah, that was like one story that he told. I'll try to keep the long story short. Okay. Um, I've been friends with Dro for a really long time, at least seven or eight years. Nice girl. <clears throat> um, 2015, like, we've been knowing each other forever. 
You know what I'm saying? The first gift she ever gave me was a Bible. Totally my friend. You know what I mean? Um, there's been times where he looked out for me in the past and he was doing well. So, you know, I've been a loyal friend and there's been times where he's not doing good recently. And I've tried to, you know, maintain our friendship and be loyal to him and help him out when and where I can. So one day he asked me to use my vehicle. I just bought this brand new Cadillac approximately 48 hours before this happened. He said he needed to handle some business. He told me he needed to pay a warrant or some, pay a ticket or he was gonna get a warrant. I told him I couldn't take him. So he said, I need to use your car for a few hours. Uh, she wants me to, and try me out, don't worry. I'm, I'm really like, I'm, my license is suspended. <laughs> You know what I mean, I was doing like 90 in the 20. You know, I really couldn't drive, but she wanted, you know what I mean? This is the stupidest story ever. <laughs> but if you want to hear, here you go. Here go the car. One of my friends got a car. They had a car. They leave the car to, at where I'm at, and uh, somebody pick up the keys and go to the liquor store. And then they didn't make it back. So I said, okay, drive me off here. You can pick me up at 6.30. Okay, cool. I said, got to be on time because I have to pick my daughter up at school. Got to be here. Okay, cool. So he drops me off, and then 6.30 comes around. He's supposed to pick me up. He texts me. He says, I got pulled over, and I'm going to jail. Okay. I had just had a new single out. It came on the radio. I didn't come back. <laughs> you just took the car? <laughs> I ain't got no room. You, would you have turned around? I was gone. I left it in the hood. You but how, bring the car back. How long did you? It was... Uh, like a week? They played like five times back to back, so I was gone for a long time. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, what do I do? My brand new Cadillac's getting impounded. I'm freaking out. So I'm texting and calling him going, dude, where's my car? Tell me where you are. Let me let me take a taxi or Uber to you so I can pick the vehicle up. Don't let the police take my car. He's not responding to me. So you left the car and went to go do a show? Yeah. So... Me, I'm worried about him. I'm his friend. I'm like, I don't want my friend in jail. What's going on? So I start calling around to all the jails. Can't find him. Calling all his people. Hey, have you heard from, you heard from Dewan? Find out what jail he's in. Nobody's heard from him. They don't know if he's in jail. So we're like, crap. So I end up calling a, a police, Atlanta police, and come to find out they ran his name and ran the VIN number of my vehicle, and he was not in jail. So that's when I'm like, okay. So he just like lied about being in jail so he could keep my car? Who does that? I don't know. I even just tried, I told an extra story on top of it. So once we determined that the vehicle was not impounded, he was not in jail, me and the police, we called OnStar on three-way. Um, it's a brand new Cadillac, so there's, you know, GPS, obviously. Um, they told me how to download an app on my phone called Remote Link. And they said, if you put this app on your phone, you can GPS the car, tell you exactly where it's at. So I'm like, really? Cool. I just got this car a couple days ago. I had no idea how all these cool features worked. So GPS the car. My friend comes, picks me up. We start heading to where the car says it's at. We get there. He's in the car. He got two more people in the car. And I'm like, oh my God, we can't go up to the car right now because I don't know what, I don't know if he's high. I don't know who these people are. They might have a gun. I don't know why he told me this story it's just so he could keep the car. I don't know. It didn't matter to me about a car, you know what I mean? Gave me key, you know what I mean? We've been riding for him forever. You know what I mean? And this is not a car, a, the kind of car that I would. You know what I mean? It's a CTS Cadillac. It's like 30 grand. I'm totally confused right now. So I told my friend, let's just, you know, watch them. And as soon as they get out of the car, leave it unoccupied, I'm going to just get in it, drive away. I'm going to say, fuck Dro. He can keep the extra key. I'm just not going to talk to him. And he definitely ain't using my car no more. We end up following him around four hours, all around the city, 285, south side, everywhere. Camp Creek, Campbellton. Pulled up at his house, pulled up at the flame. I mean, I don't know what he was doing, but... They would not get out of the car. They wouldn't get out of the car. Man, if they ain't do too hung, I'm doing nothing. I forgot it was my car. <laughs> <laughs> so after four hours goes by, I'm calling around and talk to his brother and talk to his mama and talk to everybody. Finally, I talked to his brother. I said, you still haven't heard from him? 
He said, nah, I ain't talked to him. I said, all right, cool. Well, you just let him know I got to go ahead and report the car stolen. And I just hung up the phone. I don't steal cars, you know what I mean? So about 10 minutes later, I can see on my phone app, cars parked. So I said, all right, told my homegirl, take me to it. So I get to the car. It's in this apartment complex. I'm not, I'm not even sure where it was, somewhere in the projects. I didn't belong there. I know that. Pull in there. I see the car. Over here, I see a van full of police officers. And I'm, I'm like, cool. There's police here. They're going to see me getting in the car. So nobody's going to come over here and bother me. I think I'm straight. As soon as I get in the car, my homegirl pulls off. I start driving away. And they surround me. Turn the lights on. Get out the car. I'm, my heart done dropped to the ground. I don't know what's going on. I get out of the car. I put my hands up. And I'm like, is this story still going on right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still following my car. Now I'm under arrest. And I don't know what the hell is going on. So I put my hands up. They, five officers jump out of the van. They put me in cuffs. I'm asking them, what's going on here? My vehicle's been stolen. I've been trying to find my car all night. I've been on the phone with police. I've been on the phone with OnStar. That's how I got here. I just want my car back. They're like, well, what's this? What's this? They already started searching the car. They've done found some drugs. Oh, They've done wow. found a gun. And they telling me I'm under arrest for it. And I'm sitting here telling them, look, my car has been stolen. You can call this other police officer I've been talking to the whole night. You can call the OnStar people. You can call anybody. They'll tell you everything I've been through tonight. They said, well, who took your car? I said, I let my friend Young Dro borrow my car. He told me he went to jail, and he never gave my car back, and I'm just trying to find it. He said, well, we didn't see Young Dro. So the police called. When the police pull up, cop, so, the, so she said, the police pull up. Hey, uh, you know those two guys? She said, I don't know nobody. I gave Dro the car. And the cops know me from the hood. They're like, that wasn't Dro. And I said, well, I didn't see him either. I'm just trying to get the car back. <laughs> right. And they're like, well, tell us what apartment he went into, and we'll let you have, we'll, we'll let you go. I'm like, that's the same thing I'm trying to find out. I don't know what apartment they went into. They said, well, you're under arrest. I'm like, that's fucked up. Once she did that and said I stole the car, she went to jail. <laughs> I'm so glad she was jail. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm not finna argue with them because I'm already out of place. I don't know where I am. They done took my phones. They not let me call nobody. They have no care or concern about what I'm telling them. I'm going to jail. They took me to jail five days. Got a drug trafficking charge, gun charge. Cost me so much money. My lawyer, $10,000 bond, $10,000 lawyer, car impounded. They took my phones. They said I wasn't allowed to travel outside the city. I missed all these shows, South by Southwest, CIAA weekend. Mm. Crazy. My life was flipped upside down. So in the meantime, police started doing a little investigation and come to find out I wasn't lying. Dro did take the car. They went through my phone. They seen the text messages where he told me he was in jail. I requested him to give my car back many, many times. He chose not to give it back, so they determined Young Joe stole her car. We're gonna issue him a warrant. I don't know. If, I don't know if I had the ability to steal a car, or take a car from anywhere, and I don't think I. I don't think I'm up to nothing like that. You know what I mean? He was actually charged with theft by conversion uh, in DeKalb County. Theft by conversion. Let me explain because I know a lot of people. Um, they, are yeah, they're definitely they're confused like, by that theft? charge. What is yeah. theft by conversion? That doesn't mean theft by robbing, theft by taking. It means theft by tricking. It means you tricked me. It means I let you use my stuff, and you were supposed to give it back, and you tricked me, and you didn't give it back. You kept it. That's not. That's not legal. Mm. You could be charged criminally for that. So that's what happened. He went to jail all because of a little lie that he told. He spoke into existence. He texted me. He said, I got pulled over. I'm going to jail. He ended up in jail. Did you speak this shit into existence? <laughs> well, I guess, I, I guess, I don't know. I had no problem with that, though. That's not here, not there. But that's, you know, neither here nor there. That's why Young Joe got arrested. That's the truth.